coming to the principle the first principle is division of work that means dividing the whole work into smaller tasks which is very important because as an individual if i take a responsibility of doing something i cannot do the whole thing in a in a day or by myself so if i divide the same work in smaller parts and give it to our, to my subordinates or to my colleagues we can have the same task done in a lesser duration with more effectivity so now division of work is based on three basic features that is the work is divided into smaller task then it is divided on the basis of individual specialization for example if i have to draft an advertisement i am good at thinking and my colleague is good at designing so i would give him the designing work rather than me doing everything it will help me finish up my work in a more effective way and that too in a short duration that's why we have division of work then according to individual taste and his ability i cannot give a task to someone i cannot give a marketing task to someone who doesn't know the m of marketing that will end up being a disaster so it is important to uh, know the individual taste and his ability before dividing the work the second principle is parity between authority and responsibility authority authority is something which is known as the power to do something the company gives us some power or we take some power to do something that is the authority responsibility is the obligation the accountability and the answerability that comes along with the authority so authority and responsibility should always go hand in hand if somebody has authority he must understand his responsibility and should work accordingly if authority and responsibility are not together it will never gain respect for you for that you must always take care of your authority and fulfillment of your responsibility the third principle is principle of discipline principle of discipline that means a discipline should always be maintained in an organization there should be a set rules and regulations norms of the organization to be followed by every individual in the same manner now we can have discipline in an organization by following these three simple process that is by having good supervision at all the levels whether it be the middle level the supervisory level or even the top level to maintain discipline we must have good supervision good command on all the levels now we have by entering into clear and fair agreements with individuals and with the unions now clear and fair agreements whatever rules whatever norms we have it should be clear to everyone it should not be like your timing is 7:30 and the other person on the same job will have a timing from 8 and you don't take any action that cannot be done it will create more fights among your employee it will create more chaos people won't be motivated to work in the organization then by assuring that penalties are judicially imposed that is whatever penalty you impose if a person doesn't abide by you must have it judicially imposed you cannot just spare anybody that won't give a discipline in your organization the fourth principle is principle of unity of command that means there should be just one superior commanding one subordinate that's it because if you have more than one superior suppose you are working in an organization and one person comes up to you your boss and says that you have to give me this report by evening your other boss comes up and says i want this report by evening that's another report now for whom will you work can you make two reports a big ones in the same day imagine it's not possible you can just make one whom will you follow you won't feel like working there will be a chaos you will have a role conflict so it is very important to have one person giving orders and one person listening to it for the single work which is known as unity of command unity of command 
helps you, helps the organization uh, to maintain a proper line of uh, orders in the organization. There won't be any wastage, there won't be any confusion, there won't be any chaos in the organization and employees will be more motivated to give their best towards the organization. Then we have the unity of direction which states that there should be one head for one plan for a group of activities. For example, you are organizing a tour or you are organizing a picnic say then and you have three people organizing it. Will three of you go and uh, like uh, book a bus? Three buses? No, obviously not. You will divide the work. One will go to book the bus, second will go to uh, collect the money from the people who are going, third will make the list and the food will take care of. So that is unity of direction. In one direction there should be one head. If for food you have two heads, there will always be chaos. Somebody will say, I want spicy food. Somebody will say, no, I, I want sweets. So, unity of direction. One head for one plan for one activity. It assures unity of action and coordination among the employees. And it avoids wastage, it avoids over expenditure, and it also avoids useless competition between the employees. The unhealthy competition. Coming to the sixth principle, it is given subordination of individual interest to general interest. That means every individual, all of us, we have some interest. Like I want to be a manager. Same way you all, you have some dreams, you have your interest. You want to be a manager. That's why we all are here studying management. But if you go to an organization, you must always subordinate your interest to the general interest of the organization. It's not that while thinking of your interest, you end up doing a big loss for the organization. No, of course not. That will be very bad. So, you must fulfill the organization interest in a way that your own personal interest is also fulfilled and the organization also has got no harm. Then we have the principle of fair remuneration. That means, every person at the same level should be paid according to their ability should be should have equal remunerations it's not that there are two managers looking after the same thing and are paid in a very different manner like you are getting 30,000 and your friend is getting 50,000 will you be motivated to work in that organization no you will always have a thing in your mind that why he is getting 50 and I'm getting 30 working on the same post so the principle states that to have a proper functioning in your organization, you must have fair remuneration for all. Eighth principle goes, principle of centralization and decentralization. Now what is centralization? That means the authority, the authority is centered at the head office or at the head of the department. They have all the authority to take any kind of decision and the subordinates will just follow it. That is centralization. Now decentralization. That means the topmost level of the management, they delegate the authority to their superiors, to their subordinates. The authority is delegated to the subordinates. So it is decentralized. They have their own powers to take decisions. They can make decisions in their field uh, with the authority that has been given to them. For example, Bata. Bata is a chain of shoes uh, shops okay so what happened Bata has got its decision making power at the top uh, head office all the sale that happens sale once or twice in a year we have 40 percent 50 percent it is directed by the head office and it goes on same all over India even all over world if they have showrooms so that is centralization but every dealer has got their power to take decision of their showroom size, of their showroom uh, showcases, that is decentralization to some extent is done. They have authority of taking decision to some extent, but the sale and the major decisions are taken by the central head office. So here we can see a very simple example of centralization and decentralization. We have the principle of scalar chain, that's the ninth principle. 
Now what do you mean by scalar chain? So now talking about scalar chain, it defines that there should be a chain of orders. The superior, subordinate, then even more subordinate than the lower level. So it says that the order should go in one chain and it should come back in the same chain. Now to this principle we have an exception because if a person at fourth level wants to talk to the person at fourth level of the marketing department 